Hello chess friends and welcome to your Zad of Chess channel and welcome to an amazing game that has been played yesterday in the 2022 Fall Chess Classic event in the St. Louis Chess Club. We have here Ilya Nizhnik versus Hans Mokeniman and the cool part about this game is that here Hans will pull off the favorite opening uh, by Magnus Carlsen, the Pelican Lasker Sveshnikov Sitsiner, which is really really wild and in my opinion if you want to study something, if you want to beat E4, if you're searching maybe for a direct method for an aggressive approach uh, against e4 the pelican lasker sveshnikov sits in is perfectly fine uh, in the continuation of my youtube chess channel we will cover probably this uh, opening from black's perspective more because i think it's really really an opening worth the study uh, many times we have problems what to play many times uh, we're lost in our search uh, for some opportunities for our opening repertoire so as i said if you have trouble this is a way to go so let's see now the game uh, Ilya nizhnik versus hans smoke and iman here in the sveshnikov pelican lasker so here e4 was played by Nizhnik, we have c5 by uh, Hans Moke Nima, knight to f3, knight to c6, d4, we have now the open Sicilian after c takes d4, knight to d4, and now after move knight to f6, what I like about this opening is that you are not showing your cards already here from black's perspective what i mean about this when you play maybe the dragon sits in or maybe the knight or for uh different openings you're always playing pawn moves first you're playing e a6 d6 maybe even e6 this french Sicilian <coughs> setup maybe you're playing dragon style with g6 but many times you're playing the pawn move here after move knight you have six you have still the flexibility to go into the knight or to go into the dragon to go maybe into the french Sicilian and similar stuff in the taiman of Sicilian, you have still the opportunity to uh, play something but now basically you're not showing your cards white has now to make a reaction he has now to protect the pawn and now with the move e5 we have now uh, really this pelican lasker sicilian so here knight to b5 was played by um by Ilya Nizhnik targeting the d6 square uh, which is now many times the weakness in the position so that's why black needs now to improve the position here by playing the move d6 and now we have bishop to g5 and this move really makes sense because uh, when we watch the structure it's of course not not a good structure here by black that's the main issue we have the backward pawn on d6 so you see in the position but we have also the weak square on d5 when we talk about the weak square on d5 then we want to occupy it here uh, occupy it here from white's perspective so that's why you're trying to get rid of any piece that could protect the d5 score so in this particular case it's of course the knight on f6 and it could be also here maybe the bishop on e6 so maybe when we are watching now this game from white's perspective what we are trying to do we want to maybe trade off here this bishop for this bishop mission accomplished we want to trade off this knight uh, bishop for this knight again mission accomplished it may be this knight for this knight and then we will continue maybe with the better knight that could jump here on d5 against the bad bishop on f8 so that when we talk about positional trades of pieces we want to trade off everything till we are left maybe with the knight against the bad bishop uh, against black so these are the tiny little things that we should really consider here when we talk about uh, potential potential trades of pieces occupying scores targeting weaknesses and similar stuff so that's why here with the move bishop to g5 here already already a battle basically it's a battle now for the d5 score so here a6 targeting the knight knight to a3 and now with the move b5 a uh, hand smoke and Iman plays now of course the main line and now the serious threat is of course to play b4 uh, create a fork against both of this knight so we have now knight to d5 targeting the knight uh, here we have also the tension by the dark Lord bishop so the knight is pinned to the queen so that's why you have to protect and now after bishop to f6 uh, um, and bishop to f6 Again, I'm pointing out, look at this, we have this picture, we have the better knight against the bad bishop on f6, so now the bishop is blocked out by its own pawn structure, by the pawn on e5, by the pawn on d6, so uh, when we watch now the position, the knight is much, much better now than the bishop on, on f6, so if you could just imagine now, for instance, this position again, without maybe this knight, without maybe this bishop, without this bishop and the, uh, without this knight, then the only knight on d5 against the bishop would be much, much better here. So this is something really, really worth to consider here in this position. So we have now c3 preventing some knight to d4 or maybe knight to b4 ideas by black. We have kingside casting and now knight to c2. With the idea to maneuver the knight <coughs> to e3 and control further the d5 score. Because we have said the d5 is the main issue in this, in this position. Otherwise, 
it's a good good setup here for black because black still has the bishop pair black has still the opportunities to maybe open the position so the position is not closed uh, when the position would be simply too blocked out when the position would be simply too closed then the bishop pair wouldn't mean so much now, now with the move rook to b8 look at this with uh, a5 b4 ideas oh black is trying to open the position and that's then a good thing uh, for the bishop pair so now a4 was played by Ilya Nizhnik we have now b takes a4 a brave decision here by uh, by uh, Hans Moke Niemann splitting the pawn chain splitting a little bit the pawn chain but uh, after this scenario uh, black is left now a little bit with two of these weaknesses we have now the a4 pawn as a weakness but also the a6 pawn as a weakness and now comes the first in my opinion critical moment of the game here Ilya Nizhnik played a tiny little inaccurate move he played knight to b4 and okay he was probably scared about this tension on the b file because um, he has this backward pawn on b2 and he probably didn't want to lose it but a better idea is here simply to play knight to e3 look at this what happens we wanted to, to play this move we wanted to play this idea to control further the d5 square anyway so we would have then again a central grip here maybe black can take but look at this what happens if black takes now the pawn on, on b uh, b2 we pick up here the, um, uh, the pawn on a4 now maybe bishop to d7 would be a normal idea targeting here the queen on a4 but now we just step back and we are attacking the rook and notice now the d6 is weak if we grab the d6 pawn it's then really a bad position so this is the pawn that black would not love to lose because then of course also the e5 is weak look at this the a6 is weak so this was the way to go here for Ilya Nizhnik. Here, in my opinion, uh, White should have a solid game. I'm not saying this is winning or something. I'm just saying this would give you, I think, a comfortable game in the later stage of the game. Still, you're staying with your powerful knight in the center of the board, which is also controlling here this weak pawn on c3. So <clears throat> I'm not seeing good ways anymore how Black should open the position, how to, uh, how Black should make progress here. So that's why here first maybe tiny little inaccuracy by Ilya Nizhnik. Knight to b4 gives now here... Um, um, uh, Hans Moke and Iman really comfortable play knight to b4 here <clears throat> the pawn was hanging on uh, a6 but also notice here there is the threat of a fork on c6 so that's why here Hans Moke and Iman has to play uh, bishop to b7 now Ilya Nizhnik has his pawn but notice one of the main strategic ideas of blacks and that's something that white should never never allow in I think in the pelican Lasker Sicilian is the d5 breakthrough and you see, okay, you have created now some tactical opportunities on the queen side. You have an active knight. You have some kind of an attack here. You will probably even take out uh, here um, uh, the pawn on a4. But the d5 progress will come. And that's, I think, the main issue here. You should never, never, but really never allow your opponent here from black's perspective to advance the d5 pawn. That's, I think, now the main issue. Uh, mission accomplished, I think, here for black uh, in the beginning of the game, as we saw white had a really great grip around the square d5 never allowed something to happen around the square now look at this what happens after knight to a6 okay here um hans mokinima attacks the knight uh, here queen to a4 uh taking out um uh, the pawn but also protecting now your pawn on e4 but now in the continuation of the game Hans Mokeniman is playing now the move d5 and look at this this position is uh, suddenly open uh, this position is perfectly for the bishop here the e file maybe could get open you get the rook into the game maybe the queen into the game okay there is still also the tension on the a file the queen still needs to remove itself because uh, here we have also the tension the knight is a little bit loose so mission accomplished as I think here for, for Hans Mokeniman from this point on here black is slightly better so we have now queen to b5 getting out of this tactical mess on the a file attacking also the bishop we have now queen to e7 which of course connects now the queen to the bishop and here the bishop stays active here around the square e4 so we have now bishop to e2 here um Ilya Nizhnik is desperate now to tr um, uh, to castle to secure the king by castling if you play d takes e4 here for by um uh, Hans Moke Niemann this wouldn't be good he didn't play that immediately he played now rook to a7 he first protected this uh, uh, his bishop here but if you take here let's see d takes e4 uh, after kingside casting what I don't like and the only thing that bothers I think black in this uh, continuation is that you could be left with this kind of a structure where black uh, pardon me where white has two connected passers here on the b and c file so it's also something worth to notice so if uh, black doesn't make anything out of this attack out of this beautiful progress here then 
the game could be also not so good here for black because of the opportunity for white to maybe go into an end game stage trade off more pieces and then these two connected passers on the b and c file would probably win the game for white so after bishop to e2 here hans monk and Niemann first connected the rook to the bishop probably try to play more actively with the queen somewhere because the, you don't want to have um, your queen with such a dependency the queen should be free the queen should be playing on the board so that's why here with the move rook to a7 hans is searching new opportunities opportunities for, uh, for the queen so now after rook to a3 it's a different story because uh, okay maybe here Ilya Nizhnik tried this kind of an attack rook to b3 and some other stuff but now Hans sensed that this rook has left uh, the protection of the first rank and okay still you have probably these two passers with on the b and c file but now Hans Moke Niemann sensed that he could really let this position explode this position is now becoming wild and water so that's why now he finally took d takes e4 and here after kingside castle by Ilya Nizhnik this was simply too slow maybe it was time earlier for uh Ilya Nizhnik to secure the <coughs> to secure the king by casting now look at this after a move of a kingside casting here a brilliant move by uh hans smoke and iman e3 and this move lets really the position explode we have a tension on uh this long diagonal here by the light square bishop the dark square bishop is coming into the game through the square g5 and will attack also the the e3 weakness we have still the tension on the a file because the knight is still loose on the board so we have also a too much dependency situation here by the queen on b5 is a little bit loose so now with the move e3 Hans is really really opening the position in a beautiful way and here Ilya Nizhnik didn't make a good uh, good reaction the only way to save the game is to retreat finally with your knight you should uh, you should uh, simply um, uh, say I made a mistake I played inaccuracies uh, in, the, in the opening I should not search for opportunities now anymore it's just time to regroup to maybe make a draw of this position here the continuation for potential knight to c5 rook to a3 b takes a3 and here white uh, doesn't have any more two connected passers would have this split pawn chain which are of course much much easier now to attack for black it's not such a dynamic position anymore and still uh, again black is slightly better because of the brilliant bishop pair because of the tension here we can probably take here rook to f2 still as i said black should be better and this is a position that's really not good for white but this is even worse to be what uh, Ilya Niz uh, Nizhnik did here he played the move f3 and this is now becoming wild because again Hans Moke Niemann is playing with the same idea he's really trying to open the position with the bishop here and that's the way to go <clears throat> because the bishop should not be blocked out by its own pawn the should the bishop has to have to have our, uh, their freedom now look at this with the move e4 the position is really exploding now there is simply not a good way anymore for a uh, white to defend this position here Ilya Nizhnik tried f takes e4 queen to e4 targeting in the g2 uh, threatening even checkmate we have bishop to f3 queen to e7 again connecting the queen to the bishop here we have the queen to e2 by Ilya Nizhnik because um, uh, okay the queen has created the blockade now against the potential advance of uh, the pawn on e3 but you don't want to have your queen like this the queen is uh, simply too overloaded look at this the queen is overloaded to the defense of the a6 knight and also to the potential blockade on e2 maybe bishop to e2 would be slightly better but now with bishop to e5 look at this this other bishop is coming into the game the queen will come on h4 uh will target the h2 weakness if you play even something like bishop to b7 uh maybe to simplify the game by trading off more material rook to b7 you have to retreat but now look at this rook to d uh or d7 will happen you have to now maybe compete here on the e file we'll try uh trying probably to target now the e3 pawn but now with bishop to h4 look at this this bishop is suddenly coming into the game you play maybe, maybe something like g3 bishop to g5 and the knight cannot retreat to c5 you so still a much much better position now uh rook to d uh, d2 is coming the queen will step, have to step back the bishop is coming into the game queen to e4 will happen rook to e8 so it's again a perfect storm uh that black had created in the continuation of the game so see nothing was working but even the move queen to e2 uh that uh, here Ilya Nizhnik played was simply the worst move because the queen is too overloaded and notice there is also not a rook connection anymore on the first rank we'll come to that problem now in the later stage of the game why this is such a problem after move queen to e2 here uh hans moke and Iman played bishop to f3 brilliant move uh, rook to f3 and again i'm pointing out this 
overload by the queen the queen is simply too dependent by creating the blockade and uh, creating the protection of the knight we have now rook to e8 rook to a1 again you see um, Ilya Nizhny cannot create uh, here this rook connection one rook was always not on the first rank now after move rook to a1 here Hans Mokeniman played uh, queen to d6 targets again here the knight on a3 and it's also threatening some ideas of uh, queen to d2 so here um, if you play something like g3 if you trying to cre create yourself some, some breeding spaces for the king this wasn't played in the game then queen to d2 is going to happen i wanted to show you what's the actual threat you can maybe play king to f1 but now with rook to e6 rook to a4 we can even trade it off and now again the knight is loose that's now the main issue you simply lose the piece and here and black uh, 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 Barmy White should be much much better. Instead of this move, you can maybe try instead of g3, you could maybe try rook to e3, but it's not getting better. Queen to b6 is going to happen, you're getting pinned. You can maybe protect, but now we just use this uh, piece into the attack. You can maybe play king to f2, but now the bishop is coming into the game. Look at this bishop to g5. Again, there's simply too much pressure around the square e3, so uh, White is losing the game for sure. So, see, this move, queen to d6, is really brilliant is attacking the knight is attacking the d2 square and it's also potentially attacking the e3 so this is simply too much pressure uh here black is a uh, winning position for sure rook to f5 we have queen to d2 we have again this beautiful motif we have now king to f1 uh by Ilya Nizhnik. even if you play as we said uh, queen to d2 uh, we have e takes d2 maybe you can stop the progress here but again you lose the knight here on a6 so it's not working you can play rook to f1 maybe uh protecting the d1 square but now with bishop to g5 king to f2 look at this we're playing a rook to uh, rook to a1 again so this is not working again you lose the knight so the knight was the whole problem uh in in, in white's position then lose knight on a6 so from from that point on it was simply a one-way ticket so after move queen to d2 here um Ilya Nizhnik tried king to f1 getting the clean closer to the action now we have a beautiful stunning tactic by uh Hans Mokeniman rook to a6 whatever you do will probably <coughs> lose the game in the game rook to a6 was played but let's see now what happens if you play queen to a6 if queen to a6 happens then you have e2 uh, the king has to step back and now we promote to a new queen uh, king to f3 now we play this one and after queen to g2 this would be a beautiful beautiful checkmate so that's why rook to a6 here was played by Ilya Nizhnik but it doesn't change anything here after move queen to c1 king to e1 uh, after e2 this would be then a lost game so after move uh, queen to c1 in this position uh, here Ilya Nizhnik resigns so let's see queen to e1 we're playing e2 you have to again this play this move and now after queen to e3 this would be a beautiful beautiful checkmate if you play something like king to g1 of course would just pick up the queen you can cover yourself but again with queen to f1 again the game would be over for white so great game <clears throat> i think here by hans moke Niemann. he played this game without inaccuracies mistakes or blunders this is a game really worth the study um especially i think um, this is a this is a, a move that you probably see many times and you see how well prepared hans moke Niemann was in this particular opening after move knight to b4 it makes sense in the beginning but look at this what happens as we said knight to b4 knight to b4 okay you're creating some threat okay you're getting your pawn back but now the d5 as we said d5 d5 when that was the opportunity to do it because it opens the position and here really beautiful dynamic play by by hans mokinniman so great game uh hans as i said doesn't have uh, probably uh, opportunities to win the tournament he played too many draws he played first the first seven games ended in a draw that he played he didn't lose any games he didn't but he didn't also win some games um, not so many wins uh, he played so far in the tournament but he gets some rating points he is now i think around 2700 uh, he has now uh, broken this 2700 rating mark uh, we'll see how his career makes progress especially because of this current drama that's going on now um, behind me but as i said in my opinion really this game is worth the study so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game really interesting ideas of the pelican lasker sveshnik of Sicilian. if you want to see more about this opening check out our game so far that we have covered as i said in the continuation we will cover this uh, uh, this opening from black's perspective perspective and if you want to see some other games that we have covered you can also check out my comments chess games played by computers with some great games played by stockfish alpha zero Lila zero and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course